Hello, and welcome back to Suzerain with Kingdom of Rhesia. In today's episode, well first let's look at the news, then we got a lot of decrees to look at. Plavo Abuzz is grand ceremony readies for King Ramus consecration. In the heart of Candice Montclair province, Plavo is immersed in the meticulous preparation for the concentration of the king, with King Ramus set to ascend as God's earthly representative, led by the idiomatic Grand Wiseman, the city's hive of anticipation. The art of the Arch Sanctuary, public festivities, and religious processions amplify the further, creating an electric atmosphere in the countdown to the historic coronation. The king watches as the second ceremony unfolds, sealing King Ramus' divine right to rule in the annals of history. City of Porto Jazan honors King Ramus. Porto Jazan continues to celebrate the coronation of King Ramus tourists this week. An estimated 1 million commoners lined the streets of the capital for the official parade, which military grade brigades escorted a dozen golden carriages bearing the royal family and other members of the nobility. When the ensuing banquet, Reza's best chefs turned out a panoply of gr global delicacies, from Rumbergian eels to a spic to swordish latra and tourist flabby. A newly invested invented inv dish insists consisting of Monkwiz lobster, doused in fortified wine, and set ablaze. Ooh, that's fun. United Cortana suppresses protest in the South. United Cortana intensifies clampdown on protests in the South Cortana, specifically targeting the Federal Socialist Republics of Wurzatan and Zolotek. These areas, predominantly inhabited by the Zaranists, have been experiencing heavy restrictions and forceful dispersal of protests. The Zaranists, known for their distinct beliefs and are, and are protesting neo-economic Rotskist advocating for increased free trade rights. The situation escalated following a controversial incident in the FSR Slavaria, reported under duress by the Greg Unity Chronicle to Geopolitical. The case has drawn international attention, raising concerns about United Cortana's approach to civil liberties and trade freedoms within its borders. Nice. Now let's look at these new royal decrees, because we got a lot. Um, alright, let's... Uh, um, investment in public transfer, transport infrastructure. Woo, that's a lot of budget. Yeah, I'm not doing this to start. Rizia is committed to modernizing the transport backbone by investing heavily in public transport infrastructure. This initiative symbolizes our dedication to facilitating efficient transit for our citizens and bolstering inter-regional connectivity. With every brick, laid, and station built, we inch closer to a vision of seamless mobility, all while keeping a keen eye on the budgetary implications of energy cost. We aspire to shape, to shape a future where distances become more numbers for mere numbers for citizens. Public rail transportation subsidies, also not doing. The kingdom takes steps to make rail travel more accessible by subsidizing its cost. The Shisher aims to promote a more connected reason, ensuring people can travel with ease and affordability. As rails stretch further across our lands, they not only connect places, but also hearts and minds. Now, the physical and administrative responsibilities of such decision are not taken lightly, and every effort will be made to ensure the system's sustainability. Public sea transportation subsidies, also not doing. Navigating our waters will become more affordable as the kingdom endure, en endeavors to subsidize public sea transportation. The venture promises enhanced nobility for the populace, fulstering unity and ease of movement. As we as as we advance, the majestic waves of Rizia become accessible to all, reflecting our dedication to bringing distances. However, this undertaking, while noble, requires a continual commitment of resources from our treasury and thoughtful administrative management. No. Um, nat naturalization process for foreigners. Ooh, I like manpower per turn, though. The, I mean, I like that manpower per turn is honestly the biggest thing I like here. I don't know, where can I even look at manpower? The government hereby institutes a comprehensive naturalization process for foreign nations seeking citizenship. The process will emphasize adherence to our cultural values, prof proficiency in the national language, and commitment to com contributing to the nation's prosperity. The objective is welcome new citizens who are prepared to integrate seamlessly into our society, nurture our community diversity, and foster mutual respect and unity. We anticipate the initiative will enhance the dem demographic diversity and drive cultural and economic growth. I'm interested in that one. Establish the Ramus Tourist Hospital. Authority budget. Ooh. 
extra military manpower, extra military manpower per turn on completion. Ooh, I like military power per turn. The Kingdom Green lit lights the foundation of Porte Jordan, Ramos Taurus Hospital, with cutting-edge medical amenities and dedicated research stones. This institution vows to provide unparalleled healthcare to Rezians. Furthermore, it stands ready to serve as a pivotal medical base for wounded military personnel, and reinforcing the nation's defense capabilities. And found the Ramos Taurus University. Gives me military equipment as well. Ugh. We decree the founding of the Ramos Taurus University, a new beacon of higher education and research. This institute will be dedicated to fostering academic excellence, innovative research, and the pursuit of knowledge across a wide spectrum of disciples. Man, I'm going to choose stuff and regret it so many times this series. I already know it. I know it. You should know it. I'm going to be like, I'm going to build this. And I'm going to be like, why did I save my body? Because I just don't know anything. Like, it's so interesting playing this completely blind. Because I'm, the, the I, I, I first played base series running so long ago. That on my channel, I basically knew most of the stuff that was going to happen. Yes, the update where it added new stuff, I hadn't played yet. But it wasn't too crazy at mounts. This is all just completely new to me. I have no idea what to use my stuff on. The establishment will also contribute to the defense industry research and production with its technical facilities. Furthermore, it will be equipped to prepare future leaders and thinkers to contribute significantly to the nation's progress and uphold the intellectual heritage of our society. Because I want to build this, but that's going to put our budget, like, out. Because military manpower per turn, like, just slowly getting that up over time sounds really good. And everyone's at least neutral to it, if not approves. I'm gonna sign it. And I'm actually like running out of stuff now. But I kinda want this as well. That's gonna put me at zero authority and zero budget. But manpower per turn sounds really nice. This also goes against kind of some of my gear, but it, it, it fixes, it, it's pragmatically fixes the issues. It gives me manpower per turn. I, it'll increase economic growth, which means I'll get budget back possibly in the future. I'm, I'm going to regret these decisions, but I'm going to sign and, uh, we're going to hope for the best because I can't do anything anymore that's my that's my entire budget just out of there so let's hope for the best the naturalization for foreigners process offers a structured pathway for foreign nationals to attain citizenship focusing on cultural integration language mastery and a commitment to societal contribution this framework ensures that new citizens are well equipped to participate fully in the nation's social and economic life Path to Citizenship Streamline. For the first time in our country's history, a comprehensive path to citizenship has been set out that doesn't merely rely on nobles granting it as they see fit. In order to ensure new reasons adhere to our cultural values and can fit seamlessly into our society, the King has set forth a series of requirements. These include fluency in the Reasian language, commitment to the nation, and a test of Reasian cultural and history. While this will naturally lead to an increase in Reasian citizens, the palace clearly believes this is a good thing and will undoubtedly lead to cultural and economic growth. Yeah? <laughs> um, Plavo Art Sanctuary deemed safe for ceremony. Despite the recent structural damage to the Art Sanctuary Plaza, inspectors have certified that the traditional cons consecration of the King's ceremony may safely be conducted there. However, an extensive restoration is recommended. Before this important place of worship and the final resting place of Versus Dis Disciple, Silius the Devout can be open to the public. Festivities underway for consecration of the king. Jubilant street festivals adorned with colorful banners and lively music engulf the city. Religious processions featuring revered, revered artif artifacts and clear clergy weave through enthusiastic crowds, heightening the anticipation for King Ramus' impending consecration. Wish I didn't get energy as my opening thing. I have not needed it yet. Consecration of the king. My motorcade, I'm going to regret going down to this so quickly, so badly, but whatever, we'll figure it out. My motorcade traveled for over an hour before the Archdiocese Plavo appeared just over the horizon. Its golden dome radiated under the morning sunrise. It was a view I'd seen countless times, but it never failed to inspire awe. Titus, who was sitting next to the driver, turned back to me. 
We shall be arriving shortly, your majesty. Good, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. I was here for the cons consecration of the king. The centuries-old escalation... Uh, something ceremony symbolizing the monarch's appointment as God's highest representative on earth. Better known as the divine right of kings. Yeah, the divine right. <sighs> what a classic. Unlike my coronation, this was a private event shrouded in secrecy. Only a select few, such as Grand, Grand Wiseman and religious counselor Sal Ignatius, were privy to what the ceremony entailed. Not even my father, despite my askings, would disclose what occurred. He would simply say, what took place was between me and God. Given his ambivalence towards me, his reply should have come at no surprise. But aside from the pomp and circumstance of the consecration of the king, this meeting was my chance to catch up with Reese's current state of religious affairs. Before my long, my car pulled up in front of the towering colonnades situated on either sides of the entrance. Security guards held back a crowd of onlookers gathered along either side of the stairway, leading up to the arch sanctuary where the Grand Wiseman stood. Grand Wiseman Ignatius, looking as stoic as ever. Inde indeed, he is a great man. I'm pleased to know that our opinions align. Titus quickly exited the vehicle and opened my side door. As I stepped out and onto the pavement, I was immediately greeted by the roar of a crowd that had come to witness this occasion. Most cheered my praises, but there were a small group of demonstrators protesting the ceremony. I looked closely at the protesters. One was waving a sign that read, Gulkanism is not blasphemy. blasphemy. These people look like they could give you trouble. Shall I have them removed? Let them protest, Captain. This is obviously important to them. They can remain as peaceful protesters, whatever. The moment they get violent, kill them all. Simple as that. Simple as that. As long as they remain peaceful, I won't touch them. The moment they become violent, murder them all. I don't care. Just keep, keep, being, keep being simple. Keep chilling how you are. Yes, your majesty. Yes, your majesty. He cast an intimidating glare over the protesters as we passed them. I turned back towards the crowd who continued to watch my every move. I'm going to just wave at the- I gave a royal wave to the crowd. Shouts of admiration resonated in even louder for my subjects. A welcoming smile spread across the Grand Wiseman face as he came down the stairs to greet me. Welcome, your majesty. We are great- Welcome, your majesty. You're, we are greatly honored to have you here for this momentous occasion. I look forward to serving you as I serve your father. I shall honor this day with the dignity and respect this sacred tradition deserves. It fills my heart with joy to hear it. I shall do my best to provide you with both personal and state guidance on religion. Thank you, Grand Wiseman. I aspire to fulfill God's will here on Earth, just as you have done. I have no doubt. The six stars of St. Warris still shine upon our nation. Come, let us step inside. We have much to discuss. We began heading towards the entrance. However, I didn't get very far from my, atten my attention was drawn to a commotion from behind. As I turned to look, a throng of people surged against my security jaw. As I just said, are, if they're, are they attacking? Kill them all. Kill them all. In midst of the commotion, one managed to slip from their grasp and dash towards me with frightening speed. Stand my gr I didn't want to be seen as a coward, so I stood my ground as the man approached. Titus, without mitting, missing a beat, caught the man by the arm and threw him to the ground. The other guards approached Titus, held the man down. The surprised visitor was shouting something, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. I'll take it from here, your majesty. Well done, Captain. Take him away. With pleasure. With a nod from Captain Gordian, two, two of his guardsmen lifted the man to his feet and escorted him away. Hearing Gordian so much, I just can't help but think of the Gordian knot. I think that's complete coincidence, but that's just what I, just what I keep thinking about. Sal and I continued towards the Arch Sanctuary's entrance. 
I humbly apologize for the interruptions, Your Majesty. Can't say I cared for that little scent, but I do wonder what the man wanted. He was a dirty and gulkness, I'm sure of it. What would a dirty and gulkness be doing here? This is one of the holiest places in all of Wurricism, a belief that gulkinism claimed to follow. He paused with his hand on the door. There was a time when Gulkinus prayed here in such small numbers that the presence was tolerated. But the more Dardians came to Rhesia, the more they overwhelmed the sacred sanctuaries of Plavo, Bivanon, and Jails with their blasphemous versions of worship. Can we not have built Gulkinus sanctuaries to pacify them? They aim to trace the footsteps of Warwick's disciples through what is now Mercopa. Rishon hesitates visiting their final resting place. While our sanctuaries are places of peace, they are not for those who have exalted violence, among other perversions. Come, it is time we you saw what they did to this very building. I accompanied Sal into the Ark Sanctuary. Titus and one of the men stood guard at the entrance. Our footsteps echoed throughout the massive empty chamber, and we made our way down the main aisle, separating the hall in two. I was surrounded by our innate wall murals of religious scenes, depicting leaving no surface bare. Nearby statues seemed to watch me as I passed. One could get lost in a place like this. I have, more than once. Being the final resting place of Callus the Devote, it's only fitting that such a monument is built in his honor. Credited for single-handedly spreading the teaching of St. Warwick throughout the kingdom, he is considered as his most revered disciple. I always admired him. I hoped to one day lead a life of devotion and virtue, just as he did. It warmed my heart to hear it. We stopped when he reached the channel where the altar stood. Sal gestured over our heads to the second floor gallery, overlooking the hall. Part of it had collapsed, and the rest had been roped off. It's a shame what happened to such a magnificent building. I couldn't agree more. A large group of Calcanists came here on one of their holy pilgrimages several years ago. An argument of the local versus worshippers led to an altercation. Why has it not been fixed since then? We will get to that, your majesty. Sal began to pace around the altar. Rizia's religious climate is at a crossroads, Your Majesty. For providing the impoverished to expanding education opportunities, our faith-based institutions are a central part of everyday life, the fabric that ties our society together, all under the umbrella of our state religion, Oricism. That... That, that as it should be. I know it, I would be lost without Wurricism to guide me. As would I, Your Majesty. But our religious unity has begun to splinter in recent years. Apart from the Galcanists, we have seen a rising Das Nurse minority due to the growing number of Wessex migrants. Das Nurity was the other branch of Nurse religion, observed in most countries to our north, including both Wellen and Rumberg. I mean, I kind of feel like we should keep, you know... This is our state religion. It should always be our state religion. It's the most glorious religion ever. And we should also allow them to worship whatever they want. You know, seems fine to me. Lena had been a follower, but converted to Wurricism on joining the Rhesian royal family. A sacrifice, but one she gladly made in order to be with me. Oh, that was him. Lena had been a follower, but converted to Wurcism and joined the Rizian royal family. A sacrifice, but one she gladly made in order to be with me. I would never consell this country to turn away people in need, your majesty. But I do worry that our worst values are in danger of becoming diluted. The Wessex went through hell during the Civil War. I would not deny them the opportunity to take comfort in their religion. No, certainly not. 
There is one decision that must be made right away regarding Ree's religious plurality. He stopped pacing toward and looked at me. I recently received an urgent request from the Archpriest of Salibus. The city's death nurse sanctuary has long been insufficient and served worshippers' need, and he requests that a new one be constructed. I'm not opposed, but isn't the preview of the province of Bernus? No, any large-scale religious projects in Rhesia must be approved and funded by the Central Religious Authority. I would advise you to support the construction of a new Desnertist House of Worship, as long as it does not take resources away from the restoration of this very arch, arch sanctuary. I mean, I don't have money at all at the moment, so get wrecked. He pointed once more to the balcony. I petitioned your father to allocate state funds to return Plavo to its former grandeur. However, he was too preoccupied with other matters to sign the order. Maybe he didn't think the pl that Plavo was worth saving. I doubt that, your majesty. Your father was a very devout man, especially at the end of his life. If I could only fund one of these, which should I choose? Why, Plavo, of course. But you ought to consider both, if only to keep Brennus Wesic population place sated. Well, I can't afford either, so. Sal closed his eyes and tilted his head up slightly and waited my response. I'm sorry, as much as I'd like to help, the Treasury currently lacks additional funds. That's unfortunate to hear, but perfectly understandable. These are matters we can discuss at a later date when the crowd has more physical flexibility. Which brings me to the main reason for your visitation, the consecration of the king's ceremony. Sal approached me with a warm and inviting demeanor. With great honor, I shall lead you as step across the threshold and unite with the divine. If you follow me, we can begin. He motioned towards a stone archway leading out of the chamber. I followed the Grand Wiseman down a long corridor. We eventually reached an imposing iron door. Behind it was a descending spiral staircase illuminated by torches mounted on the walls. What's down there? Come and see for yourself. This way, your majesty. I continued after him as he went down the stairs, which seemed to go on forever. Before long, we'd reached the bottom, where I was greeted by a wall of human bones that were carefully stacked from top to bottom. In an adjacent room, there were several tombs, each adorned with intricate decorations. <clears throat> Welcome to the catacombs. I had no idea this was down here. Most don't. As for the tomb's tenants, they're mostly wealthy noblemen and their families, alongside other well-to-do individuals throughout the centuries. Fascinating. I'd love to hear more about them. We shouldn't delay the ceremony much longer. But very well. Who would you like to know about? Uh, let's learn about the first tomb. I gestured to the first tomb. That would be the tomb of Telerus Azaro. Not only was the Earl of Hevis, he was the most revered general during the War of Rhesian Succession. Even though House Azaro ultimately lost the war, the general never lost a single battle. After the war, he established Camp Damas, Rhesian's largest military base to this day. Even though he fought against House Taurus, I still hold him in the highest respect. His mission of Camp Domus flooded my mind with fond memories of my time there as a young recruit. Second tomb. I gestured to the second tomb. That would be Arilo Itcaro. If you remember your history, he was the famed industrialist of the 19th century. His revolutionary mining equipment led to the second Riesing Gold Rush, creating an economic boom for the entire country. He single-handedly brought incomprehensive wealth to the kingdoms overnight, granting us enduring power and influence. Why isn't of royal lineage, his legacy earned him a place alongside them. I gestured to the third tomb. Decorated in gold, I would have considered it the most splendid of all, if not for the hole in the lid, through which I could glimpse a skeleton dull remains within. Here lies Brodus Azaro, the first Duke of Montclair. All members of the royal house of Azaro descended from him. The damage to this tomb was already ca another casualty of the Galkinist pilgrims, when a piece of the above ceiling came crashing down. Peering into the gap, I discerned a brooch pinned to his dilapidated attire, featuring one 
of many Warsism symbols, an interlocking circle and triangle. Capturing the essence of Warsism is to symbolize interconnected teachings, the circle for inclusivity and adaption, and the triangle for the divine god, Saint Dust, Dast, and Saint Work. I'm ready to move on. Very well. This way, your grace. Before I left, I once again caught a glimpse of Duke Azaro's brooch. Um... I mean... When Sal wasn't looking, I quickly reached in and pocketed the brooch off the dead man. But I that position, it might prove highly beneficial in the future. Why is that? I'm so curious. I'm so... What is that? What is that supposed to mean? Why is it going to be beneficial? What? Okay, cool. I guess. As we made our way down the tunnel, the ceiling began to close in around us. And feeling the cla 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 claustrophobia began to sink in. Just when it seemed like the tunnel would never end, and emerged, it, we emerged into a vast cavern, also illuminated by torchlight. Several whisserers, lesser in rank than Sal, were waiting for us. At the heart of the room stood a circle of six columns, each bearing a single star del del delicately carved upon them. They were arranged around a marble sarcophagus. It is the holiest of honors to be allowed here. Indeed, your majesty, this is the tomb of Callus, the devout. Rare are those who have set foot here. Count yourself among the blessed few. Callus, the devout effigy, became more apparent as I approached. Sal. Oh, jeez. Sal placed his torch into a nearby scone as one of the other wise men carrying a silver tray approached us. On it was a golden chalice, a clay jug filled with oil, a sponge, and what appeared to be a bottle of wine. Let us begin. Please remove your clothes and stand on the royal seal. I am ready. What? <laughs> Following the Grand Wise instruction, I joined him in reciting verses from a sacred scripture. I mem memorized them years ago. I recited them in unison. When my gar garments were completely removed, Sal proceeded to anoint me, dipping a sponge into the fragment, f fragrant oil, and gently applying it all over my body. After my flesh was fully coated, he set aside the jug and sponge, reaching for the chalice and bottle of wine. This is so odd. This is so weird. This is the ceremony? Huh? This is so interesting. He then poured the wine into the chalice till it reached the brim. It w is well known that this is the final resting place of Callus the Devote, but what most know, know is that this is where he performed his first miracle. This is news to me. Yes, the miracle of foresight. For upon filling his stomach with the sacred wine, the very wine before you now, he was given the abilita ability to prophesize the future. He poured the wine into the chalice and held it high. What can I expect to see? You will see nothing. Only the most pious and reverent of men may drink from the sacred chalice. His expression darkened. That will not be you, at least not today. For you see, once consumed, Callus the Devote's gift of foresight shall, for a time, be bestowed upon the person who ingests it. He peeled up the chalice once more and drank until the wine was gone. Setting it back down on the tray, he then stepped towards me and held out his hands. Uh, take his hands. I placed my hands in his. Listen closely to my words, for the gifts of sight comes from the flesh in flesh in flashes. He closed his eyes and began taking in long deep breaths. Uh, I'm gonna look around me. Same in the room I watched the other priest looked on, waiting to see what would happen next. We stood there in silence for four, what felt like eternity. I wasn't sure what to expect. But then suddenly Bond body began to tremble and his hands took a firm grip in mine. I couldn't let go even if I wanted. I see a crown, it's ascending into sigh, rising high above the surrounding countryside. Whose crown? Please don't interrupt, your majesty. And on the crown is a fracture on the golden band. The higher it journeys upwards, the larger the crack gets. Whether or not it can be mended is uncertain. What? Why can't I say nothing? He literally told me not to interrupt. <sighs> mended as in it can be fixed? The visions are possible outcomes of what could come to pass. They aren't set in stone. Okay, I'm listening. His grip tightened. I now see soldiers, many soldiers. War and death, so much death. 
And the victor? I cannot tell. Where with whom? A most vicious foe. More than that, I cannot say. Whose sergeants? Are they are? One of the armies, yes. Their uniforms carry the royal seer. I continue to listen closely to his words. I now see two individuals. They are embraced in each other's arms. Lovers. They are surrounded by people both for and against their union. Union as in marriage? Or arrangement? Is it me? Am I one of the lovers? One of them is of your blood. Interesting. Lovers? Go on. It's a forbidden love or one of disapproval. This is fascinating. Tell me more. Before me now is a heart. It's being stabbed by a sword. A metaphor for betrayal? Possibly. Now I behold an endless sea of people stretching as far as the eye can see. They are marching towards the royal palace in joy or anger, I cannot say for sure. Above them are birds, tens of thousands, so thick they blacken the sky. They are migrating from distant lands and making their nest in ours. It's obvious that the birds represent was it dust nerds coming to our lands. And on a nearby mountain overlooking the city sits a beast. A beast with three heads. Each head is fighting with the other. It must be brought under control, e either through taming or severing one of their or more heads. Or all three will surely die. Yeah, yeah, that's gotta be the royal houses. Um. Stand reason the rules under 30 of flags will in the land that you failed. Um. That, that could be it too, but I think it's probably the royal house is the first thing I think of. Taurus, Zana, and Zaro. If true, it could mean dark clouds on the horizon are fast approaching. I felt Sal loosen his hold on me, letting go. Looked at him cautiously, curiously until he finally spoke. The visions have stopped, thus concluding the ceremony. I think I understand. Good, for it's now up to you to decipher their meaning. That's the gift and the curse that comes with the divine right to the king. He seemed to still be recovering. After a lo long moment, he spoke again. Surely you now feel it, your majesty. The will of the divine coursing through your veins. It is your responsibility to carry out what he was o has ordained. It is mine to aid you in your holy duty. It, it is a heavy burden, Grand Wiseman, but I gladly accept it. Halatia. I nod in agreement to the ancient Wurrus's term. It was short for Decisi Halatia Veteran. If it, if it is said, so it is, and so it will be. I put on my clothes and made my way back through the catacombs until my, I'd reached the surface. The events of today forever burned in my memory. Part of me questioned whether or not what I'd experienced was real. And if it was, did I accept the responsibility that came with my consecration? Did I really speak for the divine? Before long, I was back on the road again, back in reality. This is so odd, I love it! An arch sanctuary of Plavo faded from view, and my mind began to settle. I thought more about the visions and whether or not they were real. If they were, what my ste next steps would be. Whoa! That's some decrees! Um... Unequal treatment of foreigners. Foreign workers from Dirty, Wessex, Bloodish, and other foreign communities face subtle inequalities in the labor market in general life. Although integral to economic framework, these workers occasionally in encounter systematic biases, leading to minor dis diplomatic concerns and discussions about workplace inclusivity. Royal consecration ceremony reaffirms monarchy, religion, unity. Religion's role in the affairs of state has been upheld through King Ramos's partaking the consecration of the king, hosted by the Arch Sanctuary of Plavo. The secret ceremony was presided over by Grand Wiseman and Royal Councilman Sal Ignatius. It brings me joy to announce that this majesty, the king, has reinformed his commitment to the War Six Fate, says Wiseman Ignatius. Not only does our crowned head of body the spirit of the Rhesian people, but of the Lord Almighty, may his long reign be a beacon to the faithless and shining light to those who proudly devote themselves to the one true God. We at the Herald believe that the harmonious collaboration between the church and the state can yield numerous ben benefits, ultimately contribute to a more compassionate, inclusive, and prosperous society. We eagerly await that the fruits of this partnership will continue to bring. Gomlin demands more sand straight. 
Gumland has formally requested expansion of its role in the oversight of strategic maritime routes, including the Galmish Sea, the Gulf of Gumland, and the Norfrican Sea paths. This demand comes amidst the existing control exercised by the CSP Corsuim, which holds veto power alongside Vagsland and Nagratana, and the AN observer to attempt to maintain neutrality in maritime traffic. Gomlin argues for a stronger presence in decision-making stems from its geographical significance and the nation's strategic interests in the region. This move could potentially shift the balance of power and control over these crucial maritime passages. <coughs> I can do, like, n like, almost none of these. But let's start looking around. Uh, provide energy heating subsidies for citizens. The kingdom enjoying a surplus of energy production is poised to allocate subsidies for citizens for gas heating, ensuring um, ins ensuring every resident experiences war pr particularly through the harsher winter months. This decree, while, while demanding an annual financial commitment in energy costs and organizational expeditions, epitomizes the estate's dedication to immoral living standards for all. Of the financial prudence of the directive, given its palpable fi physical weight, warrants met meticulous scrutiny to maintain a balanced budget. Budgeting this subsidy reflects a harmonization of supply utilization and commitment to citizens' well-being. Enacted inheritance tax proposal. Yeah, we need more authority to do that. The, the, the initiation of the inheritance tax is set to reshape the landscape of wealth distribution in the kingdom, as it targets assets transferred following demise, envisioned as a me mechanism to address economic disparities. This tax strategically positions the state to redistribute wealth, ensuring a tangible impact primarily on larger states and affluent families. The affluent equilines of society, such as noble houses, Taurus, Zan, and Azaro, will bear a pronounced physical burden, causing a potential reduction in relations in return of increased treasury revenue. Raise base income tax. The kingdom definitely defiantly raised the income tax from 10% to 20%, and to substantially bolster the nation's treasury, while the search promises enhanced physical resource for state operations, it for it, it variably casts shall, shadow on public opinions as citizens and businesses adjust to augmented physical uh, burden. Landowners tax. This the enactment of this decree imposes a one-time retro retroactive tax on landowners with territories exceeding 15 square kilometers, and to momentarily bolster the physical finances and address wealth disparities. However, its physical benefits to the kingdom are transit, not offering a continuous stream of revenue post implementation. This move, while progressive in addressing socioeconomic imbalances, is likely to kindle significant discontent and opposition among Reza's royal houses and aristocratic community. We gotta remove income tax. Choosing to entirely in in eliminate income tax, the kingdom embarks on a daring physical revision, enhancing the disposable income of citizenry and potential stimul stimulating economic vibrance. While this decree unquestionably garners widespread public approval, it has a profound void in the state's revenue, necessitating alternative financial solutions to uphold public services and initiatives. Extensive geological survey initiative. I'd be interested in this in the future. Launching a detailed geological survey, the kingdom meticulously explores its territorial territories for latent mineral resources, delving into the hidden depths of Rizia's landscape. Considerable financial and authoritative investment is directed towards unearthing potential treasures concealed beneath the nation's crust. While the tangible outcome remains enveloped in the mysteries of the geological exploration, the latent prospect of discovering new mines hints as promising economic advancements. This significant decree signals a bold stride towards uncharted economic opportunities, pivoting on the anticipated bounties concealed beneath. While well, privatization are in it. RNC proposal, the Kingdom transitioned a minority of welfare, health, and education services to the private sector. This pivotal move seeks to harness private sector efficiencies, thereby promising enhanced service quality and tailored solutions for reasons denizens. While many of the business community anticipate opportunities for growth, certain societal factions, and especially the average citizen of Reason People's Party, might harbor concerns over the negative impl implementation of such privatization. Tax credits for businesses are in C proposal. The kingdom bestows notable tax credits to businesses aimed to invigorate the economic landscape. This strategic decision is intended to spur innovation and encourage domestic investments. Industries and entrepreneurs across Rizia stand poised to benefit. Yet there's a palpable concern about potential strains on the national treasury. The proponents believe the long-term economic momentum will more than compensate. 
Energy sustainability for industries. Resia commits to subsidizing energy costs for industries. Fortifying our production capacity is designed to boost industrial growth. This incentive will make Resian productions more competitive on the global stage. Manufacturers express enthusiasm that the subsidies impact on energy resources in the treasury are under scrutiny. Environmental groups, meanwhile, cast a watchful eye on potential ecological implications. One-time government stimulus check for the people, RPP proposal. The king resolves to attribute a one-time financial stimulus directed directly to its citizens. This decision action aims to alleviate economic hardships, invigorate consumer spending, and provide immediate benefit to Reese's populate populace. As families and individuals prepare to receive this financial boost, there's a hopeful atmosphere of rejuvenation. However, physical analysis and policymakers will be observing the actual impact on the broader economy closely. Moving on to welfare, we have options of increasing health and education funding. An augmentation of the national budget allocation for health and education is declared through this decree. The inf increase in funding will prioritize advancements in public health services, medical research, and the enhancements of educational facilities and curricula. By investing in the cornerstones of a robust society, its health and education systems, the state pledges to foster a healthier, well-informed, and skilled populace, which is indispensable for sustaining national development. Impose equal gender pay. This decree mandates the implementation of equal pay for equal work regardless of gender, thereby fortifying the principles of fairness and gender equality in the workforce. It compels all employees to implement any wage disparities that do not reflect differences in skill, experience, or role responsibility. This is stride towards dismantling systematic inequalities and ensuring a balanced economic participation for all citizens i love how it's just neutral 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 prove like everyone just, like most people most of my cabinet just doesn't care they're like eh, you can take it or leave it tenant protection laws tenant new tenant protection laws are enacted to bolster the rights and safeguards for renters these laws will introduce measures to prevent unreasonable evictions, establish fair lease agreements, regulate rental increases, ensure the maintenance of habitable living conditions. This framework is designed to create a more stable and equitable housing market, fostering a sense of security and dignity for tenants. Now we move on to trade. Large initial global energy purchase. A substantial energy import agreement is enacted, securing a significant volume of resource from international markets to enhance the national energy stockpile. This initiative addresses future consumption needs with a focus on diversifying energy sources. This agreement includes natural gas and crude oil, conducted in phases of adhering to international trade protocol. This large-scale purchase is strategic, balancing market rates and energy infrastructure needs. Small initial global energy purchase. The camp proposes a minimal signature singular energy export sale, minimally tapping into our energy surplus to simulate a mild financial uplift. Treading lightly on the global market, this modest transaction tends to add to our physical reserves while pri prioritizing the steadfastness of our internal energy supply and market stability. Um, minimally tapping into our energy surplus to stimulate a mild mild financial uplift. It seems like that's the opposite. <laughs> um, minimum, medium initial global energy purchase. An increasing um, an incremental import of key energy resources such as liquefied natural gas and refined petroleum products from international markets is initiated. This targeted approach allows for flexible adaptation to market fluctuation. Short term contracts with trusted suppliers are prioritized, enabling effective manu management of energy reserves. This strategy in ensures a new supply and value, focusing on smaller and manageable quantities. Large initial global energy sale. Reza examines the feasibility of executing large scale singular energy export deal. Targeting interested parties on the global stage, a substantial sale, strictly limited to supply surplus energy research, could bolster our treasury. Now, the nuances of international trade and energy market stability are to be keenly navigated. All right. We have a small initial global energy sale. The Kingdom proposes a minimal singular energy exponent sale, minimally tapping into our energy surplus to stimulate a mild financial uplift. Trading lightly on the global market, this modest transaction intends to add to our physical reserves by prioritizing steadfastness over an internal energy supply and market stability. Medium initial global energy sale. An exploratory move into moderate one-time energy 
export transaction surfaces, weighing physical uptick against safeguarding our energy assets. With a measured re release of surplus energy in the global market, Brazil aims to ensure a beneficial deal while maintaining a tight grip on domestic energy steadiness and price equilibrium. With this minus three energy minus or plus two budget, this one's one energy for one budget. So I'm going to just sign this immediately. Because why not get some free money? And then if I wanted to do again, the amount is more. Okay. Which is why it makes more sense to go up to other things. Um, I might... I'm not going to do it right now because there's nothing that costs just money. I need authority to do, like, anything. So doing that right now wouldn't matter. But I might be doing that in the future as well. Um, convince the Zapana Hydroelectric Dam. That does give a lot of energy per turn. Uh, embarking on a long-term infrastructure audit... Odyssey, the Zapana Hydroelectric Dam, proposed within the verdant expense of Bernas, aspires to moderately enhance our national energy capacity upon completion. The undertaking not only pledges a future of augmented power stability, but also signals po positive tidings for relations with House Cezanne, anticipated to benefit from localized employment and regional development. Contract is a heavy industrial park. Um, three turn contract. Minus two energy per turn, but um, getting military uh, equipment. Okay. In a decisive move to fortify industrial prowess, the government sanctions the development of Iza Heavy Industrial Park within the city state of Iza. Envisioned as a state of the art hub for diverse industrial activities and a crucible of innovation, this facility is primed to catalyze significant economic growth. The park is anticipated to not only generate numerous job opportunities, but also foster technological advancements, celebrating so its role as a key economic driver. Additionally, this development is set to benefit relations with Grand Duke of Iza, reinforcing the strategic alliance within this pivotal city-state. Build Salbus Consumer Industry Industry Park. The kingdom initiates the establishment of the Sibylis Consumer Industry Park in Brunas, designed to bolster the Riza's consumer goods sector, particularly in electronics and household applications. This strategic development, calling for significant resource investments, promises to enhance industrial production and living standards upon completion. This industrial park will be advancing economic growth and innovation, resonating positively with the public, and fostering stronger ties with House Cezanne. Expansion of Isacurus Offshore Gas Field Embarking on a pivotal expansion of offshore gas operations in the Isacurus Sea region, the king will be heavily reinforcing its energy security and carving a producti productive pathway for further production of gas in the national waters. This de decisive initiative will undoubtedly ele elevate the depletion of the field, ensuring a robust energy output that substantial is substantiates our national and international energy commitments. So yeah, these are these are going through. We're getting stuff done. Um, energy exports to increase minimally. In an effort to slightly boost the treasury, it was announced that the kingdom is ex exploring the possibility of selling off a small part of our gas surplus to interest global partners, a specific partner still to be found, but several nations have already expressed interest. During the press announcement, it was especially stressed that only small surplus will get sold, or do not endanger Reese's domestic supply. <coughs> it was also highlighted that only one stable partner will be sought, and that no reckless sale will take place. Rizia to become energy exporter. Rizia's kingdom has announced to Merkopa Nation that it's looking to step up its export of gas. The country is looking for regional partners to sell to, intending to improve its diplomatic standing through the trade of one of its most valuable resources. True. But I think this is a good time to go ahead and end this episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.